I'm right outside of San Francisco, borderline Silicon Valley. What does that mean? That means tens of thousands of wireless access points that are ready to be hacked. Today I'm going to show you two programs. One, NetStumbler, it's going to discover the access points. And number two, AirSnort, it's going to allow us to crack the access points. So let's jump in the car and let's do some hacking. So we're in the car war driving and I'm here with Double D, of course. What's up? And we have found an insane amount of wireless networks. How many networks have we run across? Well, we've been driving around for about half an hour, about 15. About 15. And the cool thing is that most of those are unencrypted, so we can just click on them and go right in. Check this out. This is Network Stumbler. This is the program that we use to find all of the wireless access points. And we fired it up, and you see all these little points right here? This is the actual signal strength that we're looking for, so we can find the best one con to connect to. Now, what I don't understand, though, there's all these little dips and breaks What's going on with well, that? The breaks are when we lose the actual connection to the wireless access point. You see this little gap right here? That means that we lost connection for a few minutes. Oh. Now the reason this happens is because if you check this out here, we're using a Linksys wireless card. That's mine, I think. Yeah, it's yours, but it sucks. <laughs> we don't go with the Linksys. Linksys really sucks when it comes to finding these access points. Check out cards from Orinoco. Go to their website. They have a, a pro card that's really good. And the pro card actually on the back of the, the card right here has a little hole, and you can plug in external antennas that you can just drape right outside your window. Oh, awesome. So you get better connection. Better connection, and you'll find more wireless access points that way. Awesome, awesome. So now that NetStumbler has found the connection, how do you actually connect? Well, once you've found four or five connections, or however many, mm -hmm. you're going to want to double click on a little icon, the actual wireless uh, network connection icon in the lower right hand corner of your screen, mm -hmm. and it's going to bring this up right here. If you take a look here, here's the different wireless networks. You can see there's about four or five of them here that we have available, and we can actually click on these and then connect to any one of these wireless networks. Now, one of them says Linksys, so I think it's probably safe to say that uh, it's unencrypted. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> if you're keeping your SSID as Linksys, that's not a good thing. Most people are going to know that to get in, it's admin, admin is the username, password for the administrative console. Um, that happens all the time. We found a lot of those so far. Now, for those that do encrypt them that are other than Linksys, right. how do you get past that? Well, if they're using web encryption, the way we're going to get past it is we're going to use something that's called uh, AirSnort. And AirSnort is going to capture all these packets and then eventually crack that password. Mm -hmm. In fact, let's do that right now. I'm going to shut this machine down. We're going to put in Linux. We're going to fire up AirSnort. And let's crack some passwords. Awesome. I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I take a look at my life and realize there's nothing left Check it out, Nopix STD, one of my favorite distros of Linux I'll tell you why Download the ISO image, check it out, burn it to a CD and then throw it into your laptop what you do is you don't even have to install Linux because it automatically just comes right up, boots and runs right off the CD. After you do that, check this out. I'm going to fire up AirSnort right here. What AirSnort is going to do is going to capture all those packets of information and it's going to try and break the encryption. Eventually it'll break the encryption. Cool. So is there any like advanced configurations you have to do for the cards? Well, what you have here is, check this one out here, this is a uh, Linksys card, which is the one we were talking about earlier. Not yeah. so good, but good in this case because it's running the Prism 2 chipset. Prism 2, very generic chipset, a lot of different card companies use it. It. This is going to work perfect with AirSnort right out of the box. Also, the Cisco cards work Cisco. great with AirSnort as well. But the one thing, the Orinoco cards, they need a patch driver. So you have to download a separate driver. But the cool thing is, is that Nopix STD has that patch driver right on the disk. Okay, so out of the box, there might be some configurations, but probably minor. Very minor. I mean, even to run the patch, all you have to do is launch a shell as root, run the patch, and it's going to work just fine. Cool. Now, as far as breaking the encryption goes, it's going to take some time. Normally, either a couple days or a couple weeks. But what you can do is you can save your session. That's going to save all that information, then come back to it at a later time. So if you're on your lunch hour or something like that, like, like I do, right. then you can then you can come back and eventually break that encryption and uh, get cracking. That's all there is to it. Okay. So what I don't understand is I was at my buddy's house and we tried for like two days to break this web encryption. What happened? Nothing happened. No. Well, what happens is there has to be a certain number of what's called interesting packets that AirSnort captures. Let me give an example. Let's say you're at a business and there's four full-time employees surfing the net via wireless. Okay. They're going to generate approximately about a million packets a day of information, just standard web packets going across the, the wire. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens is, is that during that time, they're going to generate what's called interesting packets or, or weak keys, as AirSnort calls them. Now, AirSnort has to have about 3,000 weak keys in order to crack the web encryption. Now, Let's say there's four full-time employees. They're only going to generate about 120 weak keys per day. 
so that's why it's taken so long because since there's only so many per day, you have to do it for many other days. After exactly. That. And how many people were on your friend's network? It was just my friend's network. If it's just your friend, then you're not going to near generate a million packets a day. I see. So it's going to take like a couple of weeks. So that's why I said in the segment, it can either be just a couple of days if you have like, let's say a business that has 20 or 30 people accessing the wireless network at one point, mm-hmm. or it can be a couple of weeks in your friend's case where it's just one person. I see.